ancient lust for revenge. Although she was frustrated in her attempts to destroy the infant church in the book of Acts, Revelation tells us someday she will finish what she started 2,000 years ago. The harlot will terribly persecute the church. She will be drunk with the blood of the saints. Her civil liberties organizations, such as the Anti-Defamation League, the American Civil Liberties Union, and People for the American Way, have long conditioned the world to believe that criticism of Jews is anti-Semitism, a form of hate. Under Israel's new world order, Christian pastors will be jailed as haters and their churches closed. The harlot's media will be flooded with horror stories of how Pentecostal Christian evangelists have victimized the poor. They promised them material prosperity in return for money, defrauding them of their pittance of welfare and social security funds. Lawmakers will make it a form of genocide to convert anyone to Christianity, especially a Jew. Anyone who witnesses in public will be guilty of proselytizing, a hate crime punishable by fines and imprisonment. Because of its historic condemnation of homosexuality and blame upon Judaism for the crucifixion of Christ, authentic Christianity will be universally regarded as the most hateful of all religions. While tolerance will be extended to every cult and perverted practice, humanity will agree that Christianity should be outlawed. As the harlot's control solidifies, and the anger of mankind is whipped to a frenzy against Christianity, it will become possible, as it was under Jewish communism, to imprison millions of Christians. As the church languishes, starving in the cold of the coming gulags, gone will be the romantic litany that God blesses those who bless Israel. Gone will be the delusion that a quick elevator ride called the rapture will deliver the church from persecution. With the Star of David flying over the world, the church, decimated and nearing extinction, will at last recognize the enemy who has taken off her smiling mask and turned with fury. All that will remain for Christians is hope that death or the coming of Christ will deliver them. Meanwhile, almost every Christian will have to live with the gnawing guilt that if only they had heeded Jesus' warnings and been suspicious of those he described as the synagogue of Satan, this unending nightmare could have been avoided. Most Christians, of course, had passionately supported the rise to power of those who are now their cruel oppressors. Most criticized as anti-Semitic, those few voices who tried to warn them. Now the previous world is gone, impossible to be recovered. Gone are the mega-churches and smooth-speaking televangelists they loved so well. Now, in an endless hell on earth, they can do nothing but repent and curse not only their own foolishness, but that of the generations of Christian leaders before them. They were supposed to be watchmen on the wall, yet they failed to utter even a hint of warning.